there's no character that I can This is so cool. You know, there's, there's what they say, there's no, um, no accidents. So I'm driving over here tonight on NPR. They're talking about computers and how an iPad, how, how much uh, pain and stress-related disorders have cropped up. And I, you know, Mac is getting all these complaints about the iPad because people have to do these things to work at the small keyboard on there. So I'm not seeing this kind of cool stuff. <laughs> so here I go and we're working on this. Yeah, but um, so yeah, so for me this is kind of, you know, normally I don't work with the trackpad, so I work with like a mouse over here. But switching to actually using my hand is like using my hand like this. But when I was telling you before, like I had to have one hand the rest on the keyboard, I'm like, this is pretty much it. So there, mm -hmm. This hand is constantly doing certain mm -hmm. key controls while I'm doing certain things with my hand here. And then my position is usually right. this, or like this at some point. So we have to, in a way, Alexander used the word mechanism, which is a very mechanical way of thinking of ourselves. But when we talk about body mechanics, because that's the people that come in and analyze what we do with the computer with the big companies. So we do have body mechanics in the sense that the, the, the big bones here, your, your clavicle and your scapula, your big flat your shoulder blade, are meant to just float. The only joint that's really attached is where your clavicle meets your sternum right here. So this is where your arm joint is. The rest is floating. Isn't that a cool concept? So if you're holding here, then you're not letting everything float. So let's let this and let the connection be here. So all of that has to be free in order for you to move your arm. All of this has to drop down and float. Yeah, and your, and your scapula, your shoulder blade, is always sliding in various directions. It's like if you move your arm like in your, when you're playing a keyboard, it slides out. You feel it sliding on your back now. Mm -hmm. And then when you move your arm this way, your shoulder blade slides in. So it allows your arm to come back without retracting your arm so much. It's just doing a lot of the control from deep within you. What's that feel like? It feels great. And then I'm sitting here going, damn, I did this arm's wrong for this <laughs> <laughs> What's beautiful about this is you've got your whole, it's like a double, uh, it's sort of like a, a continuum. You've got yourself and your character. Exactly. And you're, and you're feeling in one to the other. <laughs> So the more you learn about the set yourself, the more you can work with your characters and have them be more um, functionally correct. Because these are not holding bones, they're floating bones. Just like your ribs, a lot of your ribs are just about movement. Because you have to breathe, they have to be flexible. They're not about holding you up. The big bones, your, your, your hips and your legs are, are more about balance. And then this tiny little where your head rests on the top of your spine, that's about balance. Do you feel how different that is a bit? Yeah, I'm just as good as Good. Let's get it to feel better than this one. I'm not good at it. Well, it's interesting too because the it's now right here where I'm feeling the most everything happens. It's a step because that's been sort of stuck down. It's been kind of I'm not allowed to do this job when everything else is overworking. So we have all these micro movements, like in your fingers when you were playing, that all these little bones want to move in your hands and your fingers. But if everything is overdoing it, then they can't, the, the minor, the micro movements can't happen. You feel a more and more, more of that oh, yeah. sense of space in your hand. And that's what allows the nerve and the blood flow. Well, there's more space here. So be real, so I want you to do, thinking about our body, just thinking about that, our thoughts direct our movements is the key to the Alexander technique. So if you think, look, you think into your hand, now put it under your foot. And think, keep thinking into your fingers. Okay? You feel the difference already? And think into your fingers. Let this rest. And your fingertips, you have control in all these little joints. Everybody do this. Let, think of all the little, you know, all the different joints you've got in, there, in your fingers. And you use those little joints. But we tend to be sort of stiff handed. The yoga teacher says that people come because of the mouse use and they do yoga like this. She says, bring this to them just to get them to spread their hands out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah actually, the uh, little people who are professional animators that talk about the remote, they call it
non-ergonomic he's going to hurt his back uh-huh and he's going to be and, and ironically during this animation is when i injured my wrist <laughs> when he was doing his poor yeah exactly yeah. so what's he going to become what is he going to be uh this is just a actually the, what we're doing right now is called the psychology of body mechanics so oh. this was to demonstrate oh my god <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I know. Talk about synchronicity, right? No kidding. This part two of my class starts. What do you? What do you? <laughs> really? This is awesome. So look up. And we have to free this place where our head. Our head weighs about eight to ten pounds. If we don't let our head just kind of balance easily on the top of our spine, which our head is so heavy in the front, it tends to balance more forward, but not forward and down. It's like it just sits up on this little, there are two little resting places called condos. Your head just balances up there and there's muscles in between so it kind of floats on the top of your spine and it floats a little bit forward. So where you are, just think about your head kind of doing a little bit of this without coming forward and down. Yeah, that's beautiful. Do you see the change in West? That is really a nice change. What does it feel like? I would have been in pain two hours ago for this. And you're not in pain can you see what we're talking about? What do you see? Someone want to comment? What do you see? Does he look more, comfortable? He looks more relaxed than like tense up. Yeah. The shoulders, especially. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm noticing with this. Yeah. I didn't know how much of this I was doing. In fact, you know, when things have been hurting, this is out there the entire time. So this mm -hmm. opening up is, it feels like blood and everything. Because in a way, we have an innate response is to come back to something and something hurts. It's like holding yourself and you feel 
And it does, in a way, have a healing property. But when we, when we go beyond the initial injury, we want to start letting that go so that we can start going back to the function. Coming back to stillness and holding is a healing process. That's why people, when they uh, look at mobilize, when you tear a ligament or sprain a leg, and then you have to get back to mobile. But how do you do that? So being real easy up here and still going back to picking up your hands. And then you're going to lengthen this one. But you're going to do it with thought rather than a pushing or a undirecting this movement. It's what Alexander called a nine, non doing. But do you see Wes lengthening? His body lengthening? He's lengthening because I'm helping him do it by not doing his habit. So doing things gently helps you not engage your habit. So it's just thinking into your hands and arms again. But your arms just lengthen belly. So it's just a thought. Let them lengthen belly uh, as they rest on the Now use your fingers to try to do something with your pelvis. And again, give your arms into the table easily. Yeah. And at the same time, let your let this whole core. So your balance is coming from in here. There. Now just do a little work. Now you start to move. Because we're we're not meant to sit still. It goes against our we're creatures of movement. Oh, cool. <laughs> you want to get you see me? You get up and look at this. It's really very cool. It's like a mirror. It's like a mirror, like some of those ash. But actually, after things, we've got little mini microcosm and macrocosm. So be real easy in here. So what's the biggest thing you notice about doing this? Whenever I've tried to sit <laughs> in a correct posture, it always felt like I was straining my lower back and my head to try to do it. It wasn't comfortable. It was like, I'm doing it this you're supposed to do it kind of feeling. And it wasn't sustainable. This actually, I don't know, this actually feels, I don't, I don't have to maintain it. It's doing it. Exactly, because it's about coordination. You don't have to make, what, what sport do any of you play? Soccer. Soccer. You have to main, you don't think of maintaining anything when you're playing soccer. You're responding to whatever comes, right? It's keeping balance. Keeping your balance. Yeah. And then your quality of movement, your control. The balance is huge, and this is the quality of balance. Yeah. Well, thanks, Wes. Oh, thank you. This is great. Hopefully uh, now I'll take my hand. Uh, I'm excited. I'm willing to give input. I'd love to know more. I would love to know more. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you.